Ever since his five-year residency as Doctor Who, David Tennant has been universally acclaimed on stage and screen. He's about to open in one of the filthiest and also funniest plays I have seen in a very long time. We caught up a stone's throw from Soho, where he is strutting his stuff as Molière's Don Juan, updated very cleverly by Patrick Marber. Now, Tennant's father was a man of the cloth, so we discussed the moral message of Molière and damnation itself. First, though, we talked about the TV success, that is, Broadchurch. Can you make a time to come down to the station for a full statement about your movements on Saturday night? Is there any particular reason that I need to do that? We need all the details we can get. It's your party, after all. And we'll need you to give a sample of DNA. We'll be asking everyone at the party to do the same. It's completely voluntary. No problem. Up and down the country, little groups of writers are scurrying away, trying to produce a TV hit. And they look at Broadchurch and they think, why is Broadchurch such a hit? What's the secret? Well, who knows? I mean, if, if you could uh, isolate the elements uh, that, yeah. that, 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 that turn things into gold, you'd be an alchemist, wouldn't you? But an awful lot of it depends upon your relationship with Olivia Colman, doesn't it? It's the, it's the chemistry between the two. I think, yes, I think Olivia and I would both uh, say that that comes from the writing. That's where it starts. It's the, it's the fact that Chris Chibnall writes these fantastic scripts and gives us these wonderful characters to play. Um, I mean, it helps that uh, Olivia's not bad and she's rather fun she, to be She's all right. She's, she's all right. She's OK. Ah. Could you describe your marriage to us, Kath? Well, that's relevant, isn't it? Well, I don't know, that's why I'm asking. I'd describe it as loveless. That do. Could you expand on that a little? You've also had to deal with huge secrecy about the twists yes. and turns of the plot, e kept secret even from you oh, as yes. yes. So you don't know what's going to happen. You don't, but then as a policeman, that's quite useful. It, tra it transpires. You know, you can get a little bit... Uh, 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 grumpy about the fact that you don't quite know where the story's going, but but then when you're in an interview situation and you have no idea if the actor across the table from you is is lying in character or not, it's quite helpful, really. And we only know as each new script comes what happens next. And for that audience, lapping it up week after week, is this really the end? I think this is really the end, yeah. Chris Chibnall has uh, quite a big new job coming up. He's going to be running a little show called Doctor Who. I don't know if you know it. Uh, so he's going to be quite busy. Uh, I, I think this is it, yeah. Don Juan in Soho. It's based on a Moliere play, but just give us a sense of what the play's about. Yes, it's, it's it quite brutally updated. It's very much in the, the London of now and the Soho of now. Uh, it, it, he's a, he's a womaniser. He's a, a chaser of pleasure. He's... You know, arguably a sociopath and it's the story of uh, a couple of days in his hectic, extraordinary, intoxicating life. This is possibly one of the filthiest plays I have ever <laughs> seen oh, but like also it. very, very funny yes. and in the end it's a moralistic play. I mean you're the uh, son of the man's. Yes. Um, to what extent is this in the end a sermon? Good question. I mean it's, it's I think what it, 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 it poses the life of this extraordinary hedonist and it makes you wonder what that might be like to be a, a libertarian to to live without guilt at all and and at first i think it's rather it's rather exciting it's rather intoxicating and yet inevitably the chickens come home to roost and and life doesn't really uh, work that way and the audience watching with horrified fascination this man with really no moral scruples at all. Zero. I mean, must be great fun to play. Yeah. But towards the end, hell is beginning to gape. It is, yes. And he sort of knows at the back of his mind that it's coming. There's a kind of ticking clock. And uh, uh, yes, the sort of the, the supernatural literally rises from the earth to get him. Do you think hell is real? Is hell there? Oh, that's a very major question for a Sunday, Sunday morning, morning question. And, yes, it's a very terms. Sunday morning question. What would my dad say? Um, I, I think we all have our own hells that we're running from, don't we? Sorry. Is that an ambiguous enough answer for you? It's a heck of a role. How does it compare with Hamlet? Because that, a lot of people remember you, your Hamlet. They've seen it on the screen as mm. or if they haven't seen it in the theatre. Mm. And in a sense, this is almost as big a role in terms of the number of words, the amount of time you spend on the stage, leaping around, very, very athletic, mm. re very relentless, and yet a totally different part. It is a different part, although there's a, there's a journey to self-awareness, yes, I suppose. Exactly. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, I think the greatest rules all have that in them somewhere. Uh, 
uh, you know, it starts in a very different place. It's 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 bawdier, uh, although Hamlet has its bawdy moments. Uh, it's it, it's it's a modern sex comedy in a way that uh, Hamlet probably usually isn't. Uh, but but there are the, the, there's a trajectory of the character there which which has some echo, some similarities. You mentioned Doctor Who, and Mr Capaldi is is uh, hanging up his funny hat and yes. so forth and stepping to one side. Um, I remember talking to you before you became Doctor Who and say, we were discussing how this was going to completely change your life yes. in every possible way. And I think you, you were taking your girlfriend to see a rock concert and you think, I'll never be able to do that again in right. quite the same way. Yes. Was it that big a change and what's your advice to the, whoever's taking over? It's pretty big, yeah. I mean, because the show is so big and because people love it so much and so deeply uh, and because it's part of the national conversation. It just, it's, it's part of our cultural furniture, Doctor Who. And that's a huge honour to be in the middle of. But it's quite a responsibility as well. And it, it does, it, it changes your life. I mean, it opens a lot of doors. I get to be, you know, uh, in the West End. And, and that's due in no small part to the fact that, that Doctor Who brought me to a new audience. But, uh, but it's, it's an undertaking. And, um, I, I mean, it's, it's desperately exciting for whoever the next person might be. But, uh, but yes, it's, it, it takes a deep breath too. Do you know who the next Doctor Who is? I don't. But I'd have to say that, even if I did. <laughs> David Kennan, thanks very much. Thank for you as ever, Andrew. Thank Cheers. you. What a lovely man. Now then, coming up.